it's Nikki the Angry Alchemist and today I'm going to be talking to you about runes. Now as someone who is from Northman descent, I identify a lot with runes but I do think they are for everyone and they are easily accessible to people that do not follow Astaru or Heathenry or the Norse pantheism or North Norse paganism at all and I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. So runes, what are they? Runes are glyphs carved into a medium, be it stone, bone, crystal, wood, whatever. I've seen them done in salt though, things like that. So my experience has led me to deal with the Furthurk runes. We got the Elder, the Younger, um, and another Furthurk I'm not too familiar with, but basically these are where we get our common language from and they predate and are the ancestors too. Things like the letter R, the letter P, and that's why our language looks the way it does in English. And that's part of the reason I think that runes are for everyone. Um, for example, Bluetooth, the symbol for the connectivity thing on devices is a rune for the ancient Viking word Bluetooth. I don't think I'm summoning his spirit by turning my connectivity on. Now I hear, you know, the people saying, oh, you need to respect them, runes are calling upon, no, I don't think they are, that's my opinion, that's my experience and my research. I don't necessarily think using a rune is calling upon a particular spirit. Um, plus, even if it was, the Norse themselves were super into incorporating and taking over other cultures, so they'd probably be super honored that we think they're awesome enough to use their runes. And I think that's part of why, even though this is from a mostly closed culture, it does see a lot of success in um, people not from the culture using it. And I think that says a lot about the Northmen spirit and how intelligent and aware they were. And I do think there's a lot of power in runes, so definitely respect them. Um, I would say my advice wouldn't be that this should not be your first form of divination. Um, runes are not fluffy. They don't give a fuck how you feel. They're just going to tell it to you like it is. And it's hard to read people with runes. I did a runic reading for my mother and it was kind of awkward to communicate such a stiff, staunch, I don't care about your feelings kind of message to my own mom. But that's how runes communicate to me. Um, I definitely suggest working with a tarot that is more soft and more maternal, like the Lioness Oracle deck. It's a great tarot deck, found image, Rider White style with some alterations done. Great tarot deck, great first tarot deck, um, has a great book with meanings. Basically, runes, not your first divination. Don't do it might turn you off to divination as a whole. And definitely respect the runes. Be respectful of where they came from. Um, spend time with them, consecrate them. Well, let them kind of introduce you to their energy. Don't try to give energy to them, that's important. My runes are made from adventuring. And when I got them, I had the great idea to try to cleanse them with a selenite wand that I keep next to my other stones, but I immediately got this feeling that they didn't appreciate it. And I think that most runes are like that, is once you visually, like, visualize, cleanse them with visualization, that, that let them have their own energy. Let them have their own themselves, right? And that's just respect just respectful not disrespectful maybe the audio got quiet there and I don't want that so my runes are carved into adventuring as you can see they're kind of small I got them off Amazon um, I keep them in a handy dandy little bag and I'm not gonna really go into runic meanings that's not what this video is about but basically um, the further come from a rune poem which in the native tongue helped with memorization of the runes and I have my runes in a handy dandy book with my interpretations and meanings of the runes that I found some really good posts on. I can link down below. But basically, I put the meanings in a handy dandy book. That way I can say, hang on, let me look that up and do my rune readings. I pull a rune of the day in conjunction with the tarot of the day. I find that runes specifically work incredibly well with um, shadow work because they're very honest and you want that honesty. God, I don't know what's up with the gatekeepers of Nordic paganism. Runes are for everyone, in a way. And I think that's, like I said, just part of the Northman spirit, and I think that's a way to honor that. But you will run into basically 
in my experience, now I'm not saying it is always this way, but either someone who's misinformed about divination as a whole and think that you're thinks it's like a seance or you're summoning a spirit to commune with them to get information, which is not what it is to me. That's not my experience of divination. And once again, all these are just my opinions and my experiences and everything. If yours are different, cool. But I have ran into seven or eight like neck beardy history channel Vikings worshipping like very rude men who say that you shouldn't use runes for divination unless you're exclusively Norse, unless you just follow these gods. And like, you can't tell anybody how else to do their magic, right? And I did a video, I'm not sure if I'm gonna release it or not for my A is for blank, the YouTube pagan challenge, and I did A for appropriation, and I actually touched on runes and why I don't think runes are appropriation there. But basically, you get to decide your magic. You get to decide what you include. If you have success with it, fine. I see success with runes. I see accurate readings. I hit it. I nail it. I like runes. Runes work for me. You don't get to tell me they don't, right? I've never had any bad experiences with them. I do have Northmen in my bloodline, so maybe that helps. I don't know. That's definitely why I got interested. That's why I watched the show Vikings first off. That's why I got into runes. It's because when I did my 23andMe, I had a good chunk. I think it was like 9%, which is like more than average of um, Norwegian with Swedish and Germanic Norse in there. So good stuff. I also had Native American. Just I recommend that test period too. It's fun. But I... Get back to my point. You have runes, then you have bind runes, which are two runes combined together. And then you have a stave, which is kind of like that wheel, which it's multiple ones combined together. So runes are really fun to incorporate into magic. They have that extra boost. Just be sure you know what you're doing and you know what the rune means. Otherwise, you're bringing energies you're unfamiliar with and ignorant about into your magic. Now, if you're uncomfortable with the debate or the possibility of using another cultures, there is a witch's rune set, which I can link down below. And I'm actually thinking about making some out of salt dough today because I want to do like little salt dough statues. I'll keep you posted on that. I'll totally video it if I do it. Because I'm off today. So you have basically English runes, you have the younger Fothark, the elder Fothark, and you can even look into things like geomancy, if shapes and symbols and symbology and symbolism are your thing. Definitely check out the user AD, E-A-D-I-G, e -A -D -I -G. I'll link her YouTube down below. She is phenomenal um, with symbols, like that's her thing, she's a symbol witch. I think that's badass. So. What are your experiences with runes? I'll link down some posts and things, some websites that really dive into runic readings, uh, reading the runes. Now there's some debate on this. I've had people, usually the same seven, like super exclusive men say, rune spreads are bullshit. They work for me. I've had rune spreads work. It's similar to a tarot spread. You can actually apply most tarot spreads two runes, but I prefer to use one specifically made for runes. Um, you can also do rune casting, which is great for a general reading, but it's very hard to figure out necessarily how some of those pieces go together. Rune casting is a lot like tea leaf reading or tassiography, tassiography, however you say it, where the area affects the meaning, like the past is going to be on the outside, the present is going to be on the inside, and the future is going to be in the middle. Kind of like a target. Or you can do it in a square grid system. I've seen where the past is over here, the future is over here, and the present's in the middle. However, as long as you, to me, my belief, disclaimer, is as long as you have the intent going in, this will mean that, then you're communicating with your deck, your runes, your whatever, your tea, and you're manifesting that. So that's my opinion. I think rune spreads work. I think rune casting works. I love it. I use bind runes and spells and I use rune staves as well. And it works for me and I love runes. And please go ahead, buy your own set. I recommend if you can getting one off Etsy that's handmade. You could make some yourself or you can do like I did. I wanted adventuring, so I found a set on Amazon that was rather affordable. And I can link the same set I bought down below. And I do keep them in this organza bag. Is that the word? Organza? If it's not, I'm sorry. But I keep mine in a bag with this handy dandy 
Elder Frithic or Nordic runes booklet that I made that I used for quick reference. Now, I'm not going to go into how to cast runes. That might be runes 102 if that's something you guys want to see. But this is my runes 101 video. And I will also be doing some videos on tassiography, on how to read tea leaves, and on palm reading. Um, and eventually tarot. There is a lot of good tarot resources out there already. So let me know what you think. How do you use runes? What's your experience like? What's the personality of your rune set? Let me know. Um, subscribe, like the video, stay in the loop, and I will do my best to keep bringing you guys as much as I know. Thank you, have a great day, and I'll catch you later.